that's better. But yeah. You ready? You good? I feel like I'm doing one of my podcast skits with these headphones. <laughs> <laughs> the misogynist these podcast. Females. <laughs> it's so funny. Oh my gosh. Like how you're Thank able you. to get the, you know, the different characters and stuff and yeah. I just be making stuff up as I go, which the is ball man with the with the beard. <laughs> <laughs> Have we started yet? Technically. We could use this, you know. Okay. Before I get into it, I kind of want to talk about it. So that's like a thing we okay. can talk about. Okay. Okay. Well, I do have one question, I guess, to get started. If Thick Girl had a theme song, what would the theme song be? If Thick Girl had a theme song, it'd be like... Thick Girl! Okay. Okay. And then like... And then let me suck my thighs. Okay. <laughs> All right. Thicker. Dang, I didn't know it would. Yeah, I was thinking. <laughs> Did you have the little mole queued up? Yeah, I had it queued up. <laughs> <laughs> doom, doom, doom. It still goes. It still works. It still works. It still works. Yeah. We got Mel Mitchell in the hey building, the black teacher at Hogwarts. Yeah. The black teacher at Euphoria High School. Thick girl. Thick girl. The misogynist podcast. <laughs> I'm a fan. Thank I'm you. I'm a fan. And Thank I've been you. watching since the beginning, you know? Now, a lot of people can't say they was here from the beginning. You were there from a little seedling yeah. in the ground. Yeah. Yeah. And now look at me. Look at you. In You're doing spaces. great. That's, thank you. Yeah. God is good. Yeah. <laughs> I feel like you hit like a unique frequency that I like when I was doing comedy in Atlanta, I don't think there was anybody like mm-hmm. like in that in that range. And I would like to ask you what it was like like coming up doing stand up in Atlanta. Uh, um I found that pocket, honestly, fairly recently. Okay. Um, but I was out here grinding with everybody else, and then the pandemic happened. But um, growing, growing up as a comedian in Atlanta, it was hard, man. Like, being a young, because I started at 23. Okay. So being, like, a young, hot female comedian, not even trying to be funny about being hot, but, like, it's different. Like, yeah. you, as an attractive woman, like, you got to kind of pivot differently there's a lot of pitfalls it's a lot of pitfalls and it's like you got to be careful with yourself and protect yourself because like Mm -hmm. it's some hot coochie walk walk around this comedy clubs and i gotta be careful when i walk you know walk to the car or i can't go to every open mic because you know it's late or something like that Um, yeah and just trying to find my safe space and also still try to grow and still try to like play the game It, it was it was definitely difficult but i will say the difference between atlanta comedians and other comedians like we are like yeah we like soon as like third the first 30 seconds when i opened up for war with junior he's like y'all atlanta comedians like y'all immediately out the gate and it's just joke mm-hmm. joke 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 mm-hmm. but we have to be because you have to be if you get up at cats yeah. you by some divine miracle actually get up at cats <laughs> and you're not funny in the first 32 seconds you've lost the audience so you've I, lost them for an entire five minutes and it's, it's done it's nuts because it's like as an audience, you are wasting valuable time for everybody by throwing them out of the uh, on the first word, how they cut the music off, how they walk to the stage, how they get around the chimney. All that stuff factors in yeah. before you even said anything. Before you say a word. Mm-hmm. And then walking up there like, whose grand niece is this up here trying to tell us some jokes? Sure. And what is she about to be talking about? It's older people. And then also... Sometimes you feel like you don't have a clean slate. Like, if they, like, seen you before, they're kind of like, all right, well, I didn't like them before. Well, so she better now. not tell that joke about her daddy. Mm-hmm. It was like, it's like, dang, mm-hmm. I can't, I can't like, do shit around This here. is free. You guys paid nothing. <laughs> you guys have all these opinions. And this is my job, and I'm not getting paid for this either. Yeah, no, like, like no one's getting paid, but yet, yeah, there, there's that. You ain't gotta tension. be nasty. I'm just trying to do my job. But then when you see someone break that tension, like I, I don't know if you were around when like Carlos was hosting. 
But, See, I came up 2018, so he was already on TV by then, and yeah. 85 was already 85. By when then. Carlos was hosting Cats, you would see him cut through that tension mm. and just have moments, just like, you know, do the whole show in character, like start the show with like a 10 minute story, just like, just do amazing things. And so the audience, you know, it's like a different expectation. It's not like, oh, you better make me laugh. It's like, Oh, can you do that? Can and you also make me laugh? <laughs> can like, you can, also like can be you amazing? That way? And, now I've had some humbling moments at Cats, and I've mm-hmm. had some like real like Mighty Ducks end of the movie moments at Cats. Yeah, I, yeah. I bombed at Cats, not like fully like boo bomb, because okay. I actually never. And I don't want to jinx myself, but I've never gotten flat out boo. Okay. I, when I That's hosted what's a, up. When I hosted a step show, I got one strong boo. Okay. But it was one boo. If it was really a true that boo, sucks. they would have all joined in. Because you got to keep going back out there. It, yeah. <laughs> you still got to deliberate. They're like, I nah, got hey, one. Actually, you got to announce the winner now. <laughs> it wasn't even a full. Now, I tell you, it was so funny. Now, that was the most traumatizing comedy moment of my life because I honestly won't never do that again unless I'm like two, three movies in and everybody got my poster on their wall. I'm not hosting nothing else in no whole cupboard because it was so scary because I've been in the crowd before. Like, yeah. this whole better be funny. What I'm doing, yeah. you know, we jingling some keys and shining our cell phone lights. So I had my own little, I took it too seriously. That was my problem. Okay. I had my own set of like Greek jokes to tell and blah, yeah, blah, blah. Yeah. And I told a joke about not making line and that's a very serious joke to make on the hbcu campus I said, oh wow shout out to everybody who didn't make line but still went to the probate and then i lost the audience from that moment on dang and it was tough crowd and is the, it like a do you think like now with more experience you could have muscled out of that because you could have like like doubled down and just kind of like so college audience is so fickle like when it's when I'm at a Zanies and it's 200 people and they don't laugh, I could be like, well, fuck y'all. And then yeah. everyone laughs. But when you in a prideful college audience who knows how much power they have to humiliate you, yeah, somebody would have took that as their moment. Also, like, shut up, bitch. Can we cuss on here? We can cuss, right? Yeah. Okay, yeah. they're like, shut up, bitch. With your lopsided ass weave. And everybody laughing. And now... Now I'm gone, but I still gotta finish got my job because I'm getting paid. Here. I got you. Now you gotta decide whether you wanna go back and forth with this person. Yeah, and it's like I couldn't just... cuss, and because this was my school, like it'd be different. I went to, you know, I don't know, Albuquerque University. I don't know mm-hmm. them niggas, fuck them. Mm-hmm. But like, it's my school. This is my homecoming. They're gonna see but... me at the tailgate tomorrow, so I can't even talk all the shit I wanna talk, and I still gotta be professional, and this is also my school, and I couldn't cuss. There's another degree to it, too. What? You Greek. And I'm Greek. So you can't you can't make that joke and be Greek because because it's fuck you yeah you made it. yeah <laughs> it was also that's low too. key bullying it is low key bullying <laughs> I'm low key surprised I didn't like, get as a non Greek I could talk about you know like what what is like the ride the how quiet the ride is back from the probate <laughs> all that you know what I'm saying you can't even get to that I can't because. <laughs> It's not my trauma to speak on. And you yeah. know what? That's right. Because I was speaking from a place of privilege. But I mm-hmm. can. Mm-hmm. But, like, I had my, my college L. Because, like, I I ran for, like, a, a Miss... Uh, did I break a nail? Jesus. A Miss Junior. And I lost. So, I made a joke about campaign week, too. Because okay. the HBCUs, that's a big deal. So, I was like, okay. oh, who running for Miss FAMU? And they were like, oh, gasp. I'm like, oh, so we can't talk about it. Y'all know who running. It was just... Child, mm. it was just a tough crowd. But I also had to understand this is Gen Z. Like, people my age would have thought that was hilarious. I got you. And this is also, like, these kids have been on Zoom for most of their college career. So, they really, that was their first real mm. homecoming. So, they didn't even know, like. That's part of it, too. The Zoom. Yeah. We don't even know the implications of these Zoom kids just at uh, home with their Tide Pods, you know. Like, just, the Tide Pod generation, then mm-hmm. the quarantine generation. They, they are going to need some extensive, I won't even think therapy. They just need to lock them all in, like, stadiums. And just give them like a, a seminar on how to be a human. There was no pep rallies in the Zoom. Dang. They deprived. Like, you know what? Pep rallies were such a formative moment. Like, between me and my friends looking at the basketball players, Dick Prince, or... Whoa. <laughs> Whoa. They were there as as children. And I, and I was also a child, so it wasn't like illegal. But are you going to sound affect me? <laughs> I, I didn't know. <laughs> what do you mean? I didn't know that that was a thing. 
me and my friends were gross, obviously. Okay. And then there was an also, my hands are very ashy. Please don't judge me. Um, there was also, my best friend was dating this boy who was an up and coming rapper at the school and they let him perform at the pep rally. Okay. They had just broken up mm. and he performed and everyone else booed him. Especially Dang. my best friend was booing. And he looked at me to be like, Mel, I know you wouldn't boo me. So yeah. I had to keep a straight face. And that was the hardest thing I've ever done in my life. I was just sitting there like. Mm. Oh, no. Because <laughs> like when I tell you everybody was booing, and he looked specifically at me to make yeah. sure I wasn't booing like everyone else. And th- you know that pressure that I was under? Y'all don't know pressure. Yeah. Because it was hilarious. I wanted to at least laugh, but I couldn't even do that. Yeah. That's a good friend. That's solid. You was you was eight toes down. <laughs> I was you Deion know, Sanders like, to the yeah. bullshit. You it go, was wow. <laughs> oh my god. Oh, that's not what you was talking about. Huh? You didn't see that clip when Shannon Sharp said that Dion was eight toes down. You know what? I didn't I didn't put that that together. But yeah, oh, no, I, I seen thought that's what you was quoting. No, no, no. I was saying two of your toes was ready to boo because you was holding in the boo. Yeah, so my I big toes was say up. you was ten toes down. Because I was snickering, but yeah. my face was straight. But yeah, <laughs> Shannon Sharp said Dion said this is eight toes down, See, and because uh, they took that man's toes for context. You don't do stuff like that on a public platform because now people like you can repeat that. You know what I'm saying? If you go, if you gonna dig me it like was that, funny. it's funny. But do that over the phone. But he do don't do me toes. like that on your platform. But he literally be don't eight toes. monetize your joke about my toes. <clears throat> don't do that. Don't put that out there as the clip. I'm surprised don't. he can still walk though, because don't you need all ten of your toes for balance? We talking about one of the greatest athletes ever. Dion can walk no toes. I believe it. But he you played need baseball your toes. and football in the same day. Only person to be in the World Series. And the Super Bowl, Dion could walk with no toes. Scientifically, though, did they, did they give him like a prosthetic toe, like a kickstand toe? So. I don't think so. I don't think he, you don't really see him walking like that. He'd have a little limp to him, but like, yeah. I I gotta look into that. Hey man, Dion's still out here doing commercials. You know what I'm saying? If, yeah. if, if that happened to me, that's all I would talk about. You know I got eight toes. Yeah, hey. I know. don't need this. I got eight toes. Look at this already. video on YouTube of me running. This is how it used to be. Yeah, I would. I would. <laughs> I'd be different. <laughs> they try to destroy you by the toes first, from the toes up. Mm. Um. But yeah, what we what we talking about? I'm sorry, we didn't got. So how do we even get on eight this toes? This is the inconsistent podcast. So we just, just talk about just talk whatever about we talk about. I love that. Now I have questions that I okay. that I'll ask. But at the same time, if we if we go on a tangent, we go on a tangent. Okay, perfect. Because I know I, I can get on me some tangents. I'm like, I don't want to mess up this young man's itinerary for the evening. Okay, so I'm a young man. Yeah. Okay. Are you an old man? I'm older than you. Well, most people are. Oh, wow. Okay. I'm I'm young, okay. though. Like, I'm younger than... In, like, every social group in I'm comedy, a part of, I'm yeah. younger than everyone else. Like, mm-hmm. younger sibling, younger okay. friend group. Okay. Youngest on my line, youngest in my class, youngest, okay. just youngest. So, wait, is your birthday just like in September or something? No. I actually skipped a grade. You skipped a grade? Fun fact, I am smart. What grade did you skip? I went to first and second grade in the same year. How so did you do that? How did you join and roll in first <laughs> and second grade? So... I went to first grade until about February, and then they put me in second grade. I had a third. At the end? It's only like three three months left in they school. They were just going to double promote me, but I kind of like wanted to see what second grade was talking about for a little bit. So I had like a third grade reading level in first grade. Like I was a, above all my peers. And because I'm an asshole, like what I would do is I'd finish my work and then fuck with everybody at my table and just bother them since I was done. Okay. My teacher was okay. like, she's not challenged. And mm. then she t- sat my parents down and was like, hey, she's testing well above her grade level. And she's also a menace to society, so get her to fuck up out of my class. So, socially, what did that do? Like, when you when you went to third grade mm-hmm. in your second grade body, like, what did that do socially? I've always been an old soul. So, okay. I could roll with the punches because I'm a younger sibling. So, I had older sisters and I, you know, I know how to hold a conversation at a very yeah. young age. So, that one really wasn't an issue um, people just try me. It didn't really start hitting me until puberty started 
with everyone okay. else. All the other girls got their period, and I still didn't have my period yet. Mm. They started getting titties. I didn't have my titties yet. Mm. That's when I really started, like, feeling the age difference. Okay. So middle school is when I really started, like, okay. Because, like, if we, if you eight and I'm, if I'm nine and you ten or if if I'm eight and you nine, it's not really that much of a difference. But well, like, it depends on the nine year old. Depends on the nine year old. But like when I'm ten and you twelve, mm-hmm. and you got your period in your breast and like you know like yeah. damn I'm because this girl used to make fun of me because she had a D cup at twelve, which is fucking insane. But she would call me negative A cup. Dang, that was my villain origin story. So I that's was like, why. And also, like, I've always had ass a little bit, but I grew up around like white Hispanic kids mostly. Uh, uh, okay. It was black kids at my school, but like, ass wasn't really currency like that. You needed titties for like social hotness. Also, you're you're a child. I mean, yeah, but like, we all kids though. <laughs> yeah, but like, you just had on Pampers not too long ago. You but like think in middle somebody school, like, like once the titties started popping out, I was just like, damn, everybody got titties with me. Got so you. It was a whole thing. But like I always had ass, but they're white, so they wasn't really checking for ass. Okay. Okay. It was black kids in my school. Mm-hmm. But because I was in gifted, it wasn't a lot of other black kids in my classes. I don't I don't like how you put that. I don't like how no, you put I mean, that. No, I mean it I wasn't picking the gifted kids. If I could pick them, it would be more niggas in there, but that yeah, just wasn't I feel like maybe they wasn't testing all the black kids. And they to honestly see if probably they weren't gifted. They probably and the weren't. The test might have been culturally biased. Absolutely, so, I don't disagree because you know, them white kids wasn't that much smarter than the regular kids. Because I just grew white. up in Atlanta, where like the whole gifted program was like, you know, black ninety percent black. Yeah, yeah. If there were Asians at the school, they probably was in there, <laughs> but you know, it was black it was schools. A, it was and a black I moved... gifted program, and your teacher had were you know a dashiki every day. And like was uh, super pro black stuff sometimes, you know what I'm saying? Or but that's like, good. That's yeah. the culture shock that I needed because when I moved to Atlanta mm-hmm. in DeKalb County, mm-hmm. I was like, "Oh fuck!" Yeah, it was a whole new experience for me. And then they, I was in gifted because I've been in gifted, and they took me out of gifted. My mama came to that school and raised hell. They took you out of gifted because I hadn't tested in Georgia. So technically, on paper, I wasn't gifted in Georgia. That's wild. Because so, at that time, Georgia was, like, ranked 49th in, like, education. Listen, <laughs> they took That's me crazy. out of gifted, like, in October, something crazy like that. I had a regular class for the first time in my fucking life. And I was like, I don't uh, know what they got going on. It was lit in there, in wasn't the it? They was having fun. Ninth grade. Cause, you know, ninth <laughs> grade is when you read, like, Romeo and Juliet and The Odyssey. Mm-hmm. The way them niggas was stumbling through them paragraphs, I was, and then when it was my turn to read, they looked at me like, where you from? And I'm just like. I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't like how this is. Where you from? No, that, no, and I'm just like, I didn't do my homework in Florida, but now I'm, like, smart. And I've never been dumb. I just never applied myself. Sure. So it's like y'all looking at me like I'm like a genius. But I'm yeah. just like, bro, I'm not even doing nothing. But like yeah. they have failed y'all as a as a county. Like the Cab County needs to do better. Yeah. With like what they teach a these lot of kids. counties. Yeah. A lot of the counties. So I'm just yeah. it was showing like how I was a slacker. But I moved to Georgia mm-hmm. when the standards were lower, not because like, oh, I'm being like anti-black enough, but like, no, like DeKalb County just did not give a fuck. Okay. And it's a damn shame. Yeah. Because it failed them kids. Yeah, because, like, when I went to college and found out that kids in other from other parts of Georgia don't stress about the Georgia high school graduation Oh, my God, test. making AYP? And, like, we had pep rallies and we had parties so and t-shirts Listen. and, like, signs and everything for the graduation test. And they were like, oh, yeah, like, one week of school, they were like, Oh, uh, you just take this test and go home. It was awesome. And I'm like, that's no, crazy. That was they didn't a, even know. A year long event they surprised us. them with the graduation we test. We had like after school tutorials. Mm-hmm. We had the writing test. Mm-hmm. We had like extensive workbooks, thick ass workbooks this yeah, big. We, yeah. It was really like Not some. Not for the SAT. For the, Not for the AP exam. <laughs> no, this for the is Georgia for the High School graduation, graduation test. test. Yeah. And we, it was some real lean on me shit. Mm-hmm. And like, need, I went to, what school you went to? I went to Mays High School. Oh, you went to Mays. Okay, yeah, yeah. So I went to MLK first. Okay. And then I went to Columbia because Columbia okay. allegedly had a magnet program. When I got there, I was like, Mom, this is way worse than the first school, but I'm here now. I made me some friends. So just, I'm going to just graduate. We're yeah. just going to get it through. But What's the magnet at Columbia? 
they just had like you know math and science and STEM, you know STEM magnet. It wasn't okay. no damn magnet. Okay, that damn we was school. math and science at Mays. Um, but yeah, like it was crazy how they prepped us for this test, and these students failed every year. And it's like, what are y'all teaching these kids? And it's like you can't even really go off book, but when you not teach what's in the book either but they, they gonna ask yeah it was bad then they were so fucked yeah, up yeah they wouldn't they, be teaching for like knowledge they'd be teaching for the test they teach for the test so you're not really retaining yeah. shit you just want to make like, sure hey, that we know to this this gonna be on the test this gonna be on that's what they would say this gonna mm, be on that test this gonna be on the test and if you don't pass yeah. you don't graduate and you're gonna be a failure and then they so rude they announced the results the day before prom mm. they called all the juniors in the cafeteria the day before prom to tell them they scores. And of course, all the Dang. popular kids failed. And it's like, I don't care. We're going to turn up anyway. I will never get that. And I'm just like, why would y'all tell these kids before prom? You get five chances to pass. And he so take one in the summer. calling the radio station like, my brother, this is fifth chance. He taking the signs for the fifth chance. Everybody pay, it was pray the for science my that was beating people's ass. Mm-hmm. Science mm-hmm. used to be the hardest one. Mm-hmm. I, which is so, my testimony is like, my dad had, like, literally, my dad had just died. Like right before the test, like I missed Dang. the first day of testing because I was coming back from my dad's funeral. So like, I had to really like zone in and take these tests, and I passed all of them with flying colors. But like, my dad was pass plus, right? Pass plus mm-hmm. honors period. <laughs> but like, literally three weeks prior, my dad was taking me to the tutorials to make sure like I was getting things, and then my Dang. dad just up and passed. Right? So I was just really grateful to have passed. Mm-hmm. But it was some people who literally like. To the point where it's it's April 2011 and they still ain't passed and we graduated next month had to transfer to another school a charter school so it wasn't a requirement to graduate in order to graduate on time. Wow! And I'm like, now nah, the testing that goddamn hard now. Yeah, I didn't pass plus in science, but I passed plus in everything else. I think yeah. I had honors in science and passed plus in everything else. Mm-hmm. I can't remember, but I passed first you time. You passed. First Congrats. time. Congrats. Thank you. You know, it's been. I think we was one of the last classes to do it. They stopped okay. doing it. They stopped doing it? They don't do it no more. They, they think okay. they just have the EOCT. Remember the EOCT? The end of course test. End of course phasing, test. Phasing that in when I was coming through. So we had both. We had EOCT and... We had both too. Mm-hmm. So I think my class... I'm, I'm 2011. Okay. They stopped doing it, I think, around 2013-ish, 14 okay. So they don't even have a test no more. And I'm just yeah, like, I'm, all I'm that six. emphasis they put on this shit... Dang, you 2011, that's wild. What, what I do? Nothing, just, you know, Future was out when you was in high school. Future that's crazy. Was out. That was senior that's year. That's crazy. Yeah. Racks on racks like a, and all, and uh, yeah, um, yeah. Guns of the Moon. Yeah. That was our senior year anthems. Jeez. Yeah, that's that's nuts. Yeah. I was grown. I was doing comedy. You were, because at freshman year, I met you when you were doing comedy. Yeah, I was doing comedy in Atlanta. The soundtrack of me doing comedy in in Atlanta is is Lex Luger is it's Waka Flocka and uh, BMF and MC Hammer by Rick Ross, Racks on Racks, yeah, yeah. Those are my freshman or like graduation grad mm-hmm. night. Damn, that was crazy. I remember when No Hands came out freshman. I mean, uh, No Hands what was that senior year? Yeah. It came out right before school started. To this track, <sighs> Ass was shook. Yeah. Ass was shook. Like, grad night. Mm-hmm. I didn't know Disney played secular music during grad night. Like, inward music. What you mean, Disney? They was playing Disney World with the grad night. They was playing Bring It Back from Travis Porter. During grad night. I mean, Travis Porter was a movement. Travis Porter, and that was also... Junior, senior year. Okay. What a time. Like, Where'd y'all go where they were playing music at Disney? Grad night. You never, you, I didn't go to grad night. No, we went to like, we went on a trip there, but we didn't go to grad night. They just went to Disney, just regular old Disney? Yeah. Grad night is when they rent it out for high school seniors, and it's at night. It's like nah, literally like. They ain't even. They, you be there they didn't, We was too wild. in the morning. We was too wild. To th- no, we was, we was in a hotel, and then somebody was like. The boys was on one hall, girls on another hall. Somebody was like on hall duty. Like they had us on lockdown. I, I mean, I don't blame them. But yeah. it, now for us, we didn't even have a hotel. We drove down <laughs> that morning. <laughs> we, <laughs> Y'all stressing the bus drivers out. <laughs> we drove down that morning drivers. to Orlando. We stopped in Jacksonville. <laughs> 
<laughs> to the Navy Yard so they can say we went to visit the Navy Yard because it wasn't on book that we was going to grad night. Yeah. And then we drove to Orlando that night. I think the party was from like nine to two or some shit like that. Got straight back on the bus, all musty from Yo, the night, and got right back to Atlanta. Wild, wild, a straight turnaround trip. Wild, y'all went to Grand Night in Orlando and then drove straight back. Period. And I was so jealous because the Southwest cab kids had been there all week. Yeah. And I'm like, how they get to stay all fucking week, bro? We got to turn straight back around. Man, that's wild. But we had a time. But they would play, like, through the speakers at night. Like, they would have, like, little parties. It would be, like, a silent party over here, a party in this one place at grad night. I think we was one of the last classes to do grad night, too. Because Disney stopped doing grad night. But wow, they would play the clean version. Like, okay. we was walking through Tomorrowland and here. All up in it like a crash dummy. Oh, my God. Travis? Get out of here. Are you serious? Good times, yeah. I promise. Man, we was shout out at to Disney. the kids that work at Disney. Playing Travis Porter. I mean, the hits. What a great time to graduate high school. That's crazy. Yeah, I imagine that was fun. Like, I mean, when I graduated, it was like all Wayne and Jeezy. Uh, yeah, my sister and, like, graduated in 2006. I remember Snap that music time. and whatnot. Snap was just coming. So I moved to Atlanta in 2007. Okay. That's when Soldier Boy and YouTube was like. Okay. Soldier Girl was on the train. So I used to, you know, try to <laughs> about to beat your ass on this train. <laughs> Soldier Girl, and I mean, I do my thing. <laughs> you thought I would hit freestyle Are on you, you boo? boo? <laughs> <laughs> that is some Atlanta shit. <laughs> Y'all just had to be there. Oh, man. <laughs> you drive the martyr bus. Yeah. Nah. Damn. Mm-hmm. I hope she's all right. I hope Soldier Girl. I think Soldier Girl's all right. I think she's all right. I think Yo! she's, she's had a, a great life. And people that have been in Kroger with her and didn't even realize that Soulja Girl. Can you Girl. you just next to, <laughs> next to her in Kroger just scanning your cucumbers and it's Soulja Girl right there. I mean, as long as you're not in her face, she ain't going to y'all trick y'all, you know? I think, I think she may have gotten the help that she needed, though. Yeah, yeah, because she didn't come back. Soulja Boy then, then came back. Drake. Drake? Kanye West. He ain't never said Soulja Girl. You got to really snap like this to be a Soulja Girl, man. Come on. Man, that was perfect timing. That was like... <laughs> Watch me you. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Watch me do... What happened yeah. to I-15? I was just about to say, I-15 was a moment too. Because like, that was back in the day where like it was just a bunch of random... Boy groups, so and I used to like put all of them. On. Long as you had like two strong light skinned boys in the group, I was I was tuned in. Okay, because colorism had me in a chokehold back then. Dang, all right. So B five, like oh, when B five came out, you was like, "Yo, did you you know they shot that video at, at Grady High School?" I did not know that, but mm-hmm. now I do, and that is very useful information for me because they go to my Kroger. I ran into them at Kroger. You ran into B five at Kroger. I ran recently? into I ran into Kelly from B five. This is I was B 5s biggest fan. Let me just make that very clear. <laughs> Let me this was my husband. My name wow. on everything was Brian's Girl ninety four. Okay. Wait, well all their names with B's? No, it's Dustin, who's the oldest. You guys okay. are about the same age. Then there was Kelly. Okay. He was born in nineteen eighty eight. Okay. Then there was Patrick, born in nineteen eighty nine. Okay. Carnell, who was also born in 1989, but he, they said 1990, but he's their cousin. And now that we're grown enough, they can finally say it out loud. He was their cousin. And then there was Dang, Brian the born in 1993, but he was the only black one. The rest of them was mixed. Dang. But their mama was black, so that's what's important. Okay. That's how you feel? That's that's the better half of the uh, mulatto brigade. The black mama's a strong foundation. I I don't know if you can you can necessarily do that. I feel like you know Drake's mom's white. He's and, fine. And Drake is is he? <laughs> you have okay. to giggle at the, Drake. It's problematic. Patrick Mahomes. He's look he's at both right. of their baby mamas. Yep. Yep. You're making connections I've never made. Yeah, but not. But to, to be fair, Brian is married to a white woman as well. Mm. So. And that broke my heart. I was I was in class in college when I saw the wedding pictures and I cried. I ain't gonna lie. Obama, white mama. Obama, white mama. Okay. Married to Michelle. That is fair. Mm-hmm. That is fair. But, but the more problematic ones are the white mamas. 
Wow. You got to think about it. And just, you just make a little chart when you get home of all the biracials you know. I'm not going to do that. Because if somebody them. finds that chart, that's going to be a lot of explaining. <laughs> like, no, no, They'll you don't understand. The like, podcast. You, put, you was, get the white mama pal and the black mama pal, and you think of who are the more chaotic people from each side. Mm. Okay. Sleep on that. I am. No, Sleep I am. I am. I don't. I don't, yeah, I don't want to make connections. I hope the, <laughs> I hope the chart's all over the place. And it's like, like a scatter, yeah, a scatter and it's chart. like, look at this data. There's no correlation. It's, yeah, that's we'll, what I we'll hope. See. We'll see. <laughs> if you could be any animal, Mel, what animal would you be? Mm. I don't know, man. I think I want to be a chimpanzee. If I wasn't going to be an animal, I still want to have thumbs. Okay. And, like, chimpanzees, if you piss them off, they're going to rip your face off. And that's, like, I respect that. Yeah. Because leave me the fuck alone. Mm-hmm. And now you don't have a face. Mm-hmm. And it's the strength. They are strong as shit. Yeah. They're, like, constantly lifting themselves up. They're like, they're super all muscle. Strong. So it's, like, when, like, if they said another animal would rip your face off, you'd be like, well, why were you just standing there? Like, a chimp, they're fast enough that you're like, all right. They came and got your face. You wasn't even by them. It. Yeah. It's like you looked at them wrong from 100 feet face. away. Mm-hmm. I'm coming over there to snatch your goddamn nose off your face. Mm-hmm. And, and peeled it, it like a banana. It's and really then nothing then you can like, do about it. Oh, no. This is what I do to everything. This and I, I may rip a food. finger or two off mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. because I'm just that strong. Yeah. And I got to respect chimpanzees for that. I'm afraid of them. But if I could join them, I would. If you could join the chimpanzees. And honestly, like they like a couple <laughs> Skips and a hop of evolution from just being humans. Okay. Because they are definitely our cousins. And once they get the technology, I'm going to still be walking and talking anyway. Chimps going to be driving in about 10 years. You think so? Probably, yeah. They teaching the chimp how to drive right now. Why? In a lab. Why do we Why need a chimp to know how to drive? I never understood that when they were like, oh, yeah, they used to send monkeys to space. And it's like, we don't even have monkey bus drivers. Why would we Yet. have monkeys in space? Yet. They got Teslas driving themselves, and the Teslas is crashing into each other. But if you had a monkey driving the Tesla, that can kind of cancel out some of the collisions. Okay, what would you rather, a drunk driver or a monkey driver? Monkey. You So you would trust a monkey to drive you over somebody who's drunk? Either way, I'm probably going to die. And I mean, I don't want to encourage people to drive drunk, but it's it's been... <laughs> I have thorough proof that it's been done. Fair. <laughs> Fair. I don't want to incriminate but a well-trained, anything or anybody. A but well-trained just say, monkey can get you from A to B, though. I, yeah, true. True. They have thumbs. I trust animals with thumbs. Here's the and thing. And dolphins. You got to change where you're going. You got to change your destination. The drunk person might drive better. They might be like, you know what? I drive that way but how drunk? even better. The monkey communicating to a chimp like, hey, I, I'm sorry to call chimps monkeys. I know they're not. But yeah, they communicating work. that to them might be difficult. Okay, but how drunk is the drunk person? Because that's important. Like, are they coherent? Are they like, oh, I'm fine. Like, when they're not? Like, it's levels to drunk. There are levels to drunk. Because how drunk are you? Because some drunk, you just not going to make it at that parking lot because yeah, you're that drunk. That's true. That's if you true. a tipsy, a strong, a sturdy tipsy. Sturdy tipsy. Sturdy tipsy. I'll, I'll, I'll put my money on the sturdy tipsy. But like sturdy a drunk person. Sturdy tipsy is like when you got to tell someone that you're drunk. Like they don't even. Oh, well, that's a sober person. That's a sober person? No, I'm not saying it's a sober person, but like, oh, okay. If I'm just like, like, I feel like sturdy tipsy is where somebody's like, you know, I'm a little tipsy right now. And they're like, really? Like, that's sturdy tipsy. They can get you home safe. They can get you home. I have a friend who has done that plenty of times. Okay. <laughs> okay. But like, drunk? Drunk. Like, take this bitch home drunk? Yeah. No, I'm taking the chimp over that. Mm-hmm. You know. Yeah, no, that makes sense. That makes sense. That's safe. Mm-hmm. That's safe. Do you do you enjoy alcohol? Yeah, but not like for real, for real. What's your drink of choice? So I went to my line sister's wedding, mm-hmm. and they didn't have tequila, so I had to get creative. Okay. And I know I'm not the first person to think of this at all. I'm not saying I invented this drink, but some Malibu with pineapple juice and grenadine. 
Okay. It's so good. Malibu, pineapple juice, grenadine. And they got that. Chances are they got that. Chances are they got some grenadine back there. Yeah. They got some pineapple juice and they got some Malibu. You can kind of scope out a white bottle. Yeah, because it's easy to spot. Before you And it's ask such an that. easy drink. It's, it's fruity. Mm hmm. Mm -hmm. And it gets you right where you need to be. Okay. It's perfect. I'm a I'm a whiskey drinker. I'm, mm. I'm yeah. Man drink. Dark dark liquor. Let me get an old fashioned. I I loved when it was in vogue. Actually, I wasn't even drinking it like that when it when everybody was like anything is possible and oh, you know brother. Young and Mabel was playing and stuff. And now that people have moved on to tequila, I feel like an outsider. You know, there was a, a great migration to tequila in about 2017, 2018. Mm -hmm. But honestly, since I migrated over to tequila, I've had less blackout drunk nights. I've had less like, oh, you know, you did that redacted to me in the club. And I, I have kissed less people. No, I have not kissed less people in the mouth. But I have blacked out less and done dumb stuff less since I migrated over to tequila. Okay. And I love that for me. Yeah, that's great. And I'm going to, you know, because I drank. I was at an event during homecoming and it mm -hmm. was like open bar, but it was like a whiskey. It was Japanese whiskey. And I drank it because it's free. And then I went to the club and drank how I usually drink. So that means I mixed. Okay. And I, okay. Hadn't, I hadn't blocked you out felt, in like four years. Like new venue, new slate. Hey, I, <laughs> that stuff I did over there, that's over that's there. A, that's, I'm going to do what I I'm normally do over here. Everybody's just going to forget about what happened over there. I should have drank some Crown or something because mm -hmm. I blacked out. And Dang. I haven't blacked out in years the, I feel like the closest I got to blacking out was like at an airport like I made it to the con the gate and everything but I was like I hope no one talks to me cause I'm they're but not did you get drunk at the airport no I got like I went straight from a party to like grab my bags went straight to the airport okay yeah yeah I don't understand how people be drunk in the airport that's not appealing to me because I be so <laughs> I gotta get to my flight that I can't I can't be worried about you don't do it on purpose it just happens well yeah that's true too but I don't like I be so I missed one flight of my life and that was my keeper distance flight and I'm so traumatized by that dang yeah I got on the next one but it was still like so much happening in that day and I'm crying and throwing up in the airport it was too much throwing like, up I'm not throwing up <laughs> <laughs> literally but like figuratively throwing up and if it's a party at night and I, oh, I go straight to the airport, I don't No, I'm just going to, y'all have fun. Okay. I'm just not going to go. You just shut it down? Y'all just, y'all have fun without me. Yeah. Mel, do you believe in aliens? Absolutely. Absolutely? No doubt about it. You think that aliens have seen any of your work? You know, I would be really honored if like Bleep Orp compliments my comedy. Okay. Because that would like, I really been like fucking with aliens for a long time. Like I've been waiting for their arrival. Mm. So for them to be like, we come in peace and you funny as hell. I'd be like, really? <laughs> and then they like laser beam me and I die. But like, no, nah. I don't know. Like, I don't you heard know. about the UFOs this week, right? No, they've been hella. They've been having hella. Look it up on your little computer. They got UFOs I got one this rule week. On this podcast, we don't look anything up. Oh dang. Mm hmm. That's the only rule. That's a hell of a rule, but when you get <laughs> when you get home, mm -hmm. look it up. There've been UFOs this week. This this past seven days, and it was um, UFOs that been getting shot down in like U.S. airspace or some shit like that. But they coming UFOs don't mean aliens. It just means they don't got paperwork. And they ask the man, the Unidentified military man, flying objects. That means they just don't got paperwork. Fair. And they asked the man, like, hey, do you think it's aliens? He said, we're not ruling anything out. Mm. So he left that door open, which means, because if, if it was China or Korea, they would have said it was China or Korea. Yeah, that's true. It so, is weird that they're they flying over a spy balloon or weather balloon. They, wait, they called it a weather balloon? I did read about that. I try to stay out of, like other countries business when it comes to them attacking us because like if y'all just gonna blow us up just gonna do it i don't want to have to worry about it i'd rather y'all just do it while i'm at ross shopping for some new stuff then be ross sitting. already looks like it's been blown up fair <laughs> you are that is a very the, fair assumption. the bomb has already went up at ross and in that and way i'll have cushion because it's gonna be so much stuff on the floor and i don't know what happened because i swear growing up ross wasn't that bad 
Ross was always that bad. I think, in the, at least in Atlanta, the Rosses have rebranded a little bit, and they're not as dirty. Okay. Because growing up, they used to be bad. Like, you couldn't even get through the aisles. But I think what they would do, because I know the one in Miami at Dolphin Mall, they have so much stuff. They had to open a second Ross in the mall. Now, that's fire. That is fire. That's fire. But it's you like, know, y'all have so much stuff My in biggest here. gripe with Ross is they don't have enough stuff. You always see something that you want, and then it's like, but they only had that in one size. And they had to open up a whole new Ross on the other side of the mall, and I'm going to shop at both them bitches. Yeah. Well, I'm going I'm to walk in one and be like, is this the second one or the first one? Because I'm going to go to the first one first. The OG one usually yeah. has the better things, but if it's like some leftover stuff in the mm-hmm. second one. I love Ross, though. Ross you might be great. able to tell. You might be able to immediately tell, like, oh, this... This yeah, the second one Ross. is kind of newer. It seems a little wet behind the ears. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Yeah. Ross, also, it feels like everything's spaced in a way that, like, the minute you walk in, everyone can see everything you do. Like, all right. Like the loss prevention person with the vest, like, that's going to mm-hmm, protect. Mm-hmm. If I really want to steal out this bitch, I'm going to fucking steal. Well, it's like, if we all did it, they can't do nothing. They can't get us all. You know, and that's my thing. Like, when we finally eat the rich, how are they going to stop us? Wait, you said that like that's inevitable when we eat the rich. Why yeah. are we eating the rich? Because fuck them, that's why. What if, if you gonna become de- rich? If we're going to defeat capitalism, we have to eat the rich. I've already called Beyonce. I don't know who you're going to eat. And I love Beyonce, but somebody, if I would somebody rather already tried it. to bite Beyonce and we, yeah. we just let that slide. You know, and we just let it just keep on being in movies and stuff. And yeah. just like, you bit Beyonce. You but bit honestly, Beyonce. I, I can't. I would want to be like ah, 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 on Beyonce too. Sober? No, it's more of an intrusive drunk thought. Or you know when you be high and your brain just be doing stuff. Yeah, that's yeah. Probably what happened? Yeah. And it, it's not supposed to get that far. You're supposed to be. You definitely supposed to think like you're supposed to catch yourself. You said I should bite this bitch, and then yeah. you're like ah no, nah, but then the, oh no, nah, yeah. Didn't register. Maybe tell your best friend that's it. But that yeah, I want to bite this bitch, and yeah. then that's it. <laughs> But you really not did there. it. You're not supposed to just not do there. it. Like, hey, I gotta tell you something in the car. And then like you on know the ride. I was her. <laughs> My brain told me to bite Man, her, but I said no. Everything was saying, what does Beyonce's face taste like? But then you know, I stopped myself. You know, I ain't crazy. But like <laughs> licking Beyonce would have been even weirder, but made sense because you want to just taste it. But you bit her. But see, licking Beyonce would have got out there. That would have got leaked. That would have got leaked. I wonder what kind of bite it was. It a nibble or like it was bad enough your teeth are touching me? I think I think it's got to be enough for it to be confirmed a bite. Because if it's not enough, then it's like, man, I kissed her on the cheek. I, I, I did not, I be, lying, but it was I did like, not bite Beyonce. I don't know why y'all trying to fight me. I did not. I want to bi- know what kind of bite it was. Mm-hmm. Like a like a Squidward when Squidward tried the Krabby Patty like that. Okay. I forgot you. Y'all like the millennials right before we started watching SpongeBob. You were Talk a teenager when Sp- SpongeBob came out. Talk about it. So y'all didn't really watch SpongeBob. I was a preteen. So you I didn't give like, a that's damn. For, that's for babies. That's for kids. That's for kids. I was Are born you ready, in that kids? Month. Oh, I'm turning that off. They're not talking to me. I'm They're not talking to me. I'm about to turn on MTV now. Yeah, see, <laughs> y'all missed a crucial part of growing up by not watching SpongeBob because there's so many like funny jokes from SpongeBob. We was winning for a long time. For a long time, we was like, don't even bring that SpongeBob stuff up here. You young as hell. Yo, we watching 106 in Park. Don't even do that. It's real out here. Genuine on a stretcher. You don't even know about that. <laughs> then something happened and the SpongeBob generation got older and started applying SpongeBob stuff to, to life. real life. Because it worked, though. When I'm driving, it's a part with SpongeBob, like, take his big toe and just put it on the gas pedal. I do that all the time. I know parts of SpongeBob, like, I know parts of I Love Lucy. Like, I didn't see it. But, but I know, know it because I have to know. You got to apply it Krusty to life. Krusty Krab Pizza is the best pizza for you, you and me. Krusty Krab! <laughs> like, to see that shit in real time. I didn't see it. Like, I, I only you wasn't it. there, but, like, I learned the fact that, from that shit Vine. was funny when I was five, and it's funny when I'm 28 today. The shit is funny. Like, I, I had Pluto TV to just be playing shit, and I put SpongeBob on. Like, the OG Sponge is still funny, my nigga. Is it? It's funny. Is it's it? It's still funny. Like. I think about Doug. Doug was sweet. That's how I feel about Doug. Doug Doug wasn't like funny though. 
His name was Doug Funny. I know. I, now that I say it out loud, like damn, Doug I need Funny. more allowance. The beats they had hits. Like Doug was for the Killer culture. Tofu. But you wasn't like, ha ha ha. Doug is so funny. Ha ha ha. It was. You kind of like felt bad for him. Like Patty, bro, he like you. Yo, but that music that played when Patty walked in the room, <laughs> I could feel. Ha, I felt that. He was lucky stalking that girl. Yo, and Patty was uh, was Haitian. Is that true or did you make that up? L- l- blonde, or dark. Like, she was like, definitely black. got the little fro. For Patty sure was Haitian. I, I believe it. <laughs> hey Arnold, did you watch Hey Arnold? I watched Hey Arnold. I remember okay. when they premiered Hey Arnold. Damn, I don't remember the, that. At the Harriet the Spy, it was like before the movie starts, Harry a preview the of the new cartoon Hey Arnold. Damn, and then, damn, mm-hmm, damn. Mm-hmm. Harriet the Spy was a moment too. That was a moment. Orange tape, the Rugrats Orange rap. tape. Mm-hmm. Rugrats, I have a joke about like liking 1997 niggas who didn't see the Rugrats movie in theaters. I remember that I being an event. I cried. Bro, Tommy's about to kill that nigga. You about yeah. to kill your newborn. Why? First off, why are you one? Mm-hmm. You're, this, that's how Rihanna kid's going to be. It's going to be like Tommy and Dill. Dang. Because like you're one years old. You and other one-year-olds and Chucky, who's two. Mm-hmm. Angelica's three. Y'all are in the woods with a newborn baby and none of y'all are dead. First off, if they were black, if Susie got lost in the woods, Susie would have been in Child Protective Services. They yeah. would have took Susie. Ain't no dummy bears up in they here. They did Susie dirty recently with well, the make picture. Her season, made the her single, single mother. mother. And it's like we done seen both Susie's parents. You know, Stu Pickles was nerding out on on with his broke ass on <laughs> on Susie's dad. Oh man, you you a famous architect? Blah blah. blah. Oh, maybe we can get coffee. You know, like he wasn't even studying him. He was and Susie to always in. had her shit together. Angelica would Susie be was the four. the cookie, cookie monster pajamas single mother. You remember that episode, and it was like Angelica was trying to outdo Susie at everything. Susie kept winning. Like they they did like a car girl. race. They did like uh, all kind of contests, and it was like, yeah, Susie's four, you three, and like, ooh, it ate her up. But honestly, like a four year old when you three is like, who the fuck does this bitch think she is? Yeah, yeah, that's the energy that Susie I remember. Brought. I remember being four, and like a three year old tried to holler at me, and I was mm-hmm. like, I'm four, so I don't know what you got going on. But Tommy wasn't even on all that weird stuff when Susie came around. You know, Susie not around. Tommy like, this, why don't we get naked? And take and all Susie his clothes around, off, you know what I'm saying? Tommy wasn't Tommy, on that. Yeah, Susie came around like, Tommy like, yo, where my shirt at? Everybody want to impress Susie because mm-hmm. she was that girl. Mm-hmm. But the thing is, I like Angelica and Susie. I like Susie because she looked like me. But okay. I, I acted like Angelica. Okay, so you, you ripped all the hair out your doll? Your doll was they looking like They had hair. Cynthia. I like doing hair, but they did not have clothes on. They were all naked. Okay. As soon okay. as I got a doll, wow, how lovely. Mm-hmm. And then I would make my dolls have orgies. Dang, you was a horny kid. I was. Florida kids, y'all wild. I used to, I got caught one time. I had an easel. And I had... I don't even know how I knew to do this. But my dolls were having a threesome. And I got caught. My sister told on me and I got in trouble. Yeah. I don't know what how I doing? even knew to do that. But they was getting down. I, they was... And I would open the legs. I would put the legs back and put the boy in and just he'd be tearing that ass up. That's crazy. I used to call it hunching. I knew what sex was. I didn't know that's how babies were made. So when I finally asked, because I watched so much TV when parents would freak out when a kid asked how babies are made. So I was like, fuck it. I'm just ask. Mom, how are babies made? She's like, oh, when a man left. And no, I think she's like, man and woman have sex. I'm like, sex? Yeah. Okay. Okay. I know what sex they, is. They say so sex that's where TV babies all come the time. from. Mm-hmm. But, like, my parents, the only thing I had parameters with watching was Harry Potter. And, like, witchcraft and stuff, I couldn't watch that. But, like, okay. I'm watching fucking Players Club. So I know what sex is. There's some witchcraft in Players Club that you shouldn't have been watching. That's crazy. I had no business watching half the shit I was watching. But the thing that they kept for me was obviously for kids. Like, when I finally watched Harry Potter at 25 mm-hmm. during quarantine, I'm like, bro, this is for kids. Yeah. Y'all kept this from me? Mm-hmm. And for what? This is a so wait, program. you didn't watch Harry Potter till you were twenty five? I wasn't allowed. It was witchcraft. My parents were very adamant about that. Oh, see, I'm thinking when you doing the the teacher at Hogwarts. This is from like like a childhood 
No. I always wanted to Those insert are my fresh myself. thoughts. These are fresh thoughts. Like, I just now. Wow, that's crazy. That's what makes it so funny. Yeah. Because, like, my mom was so adamant. I only watched Harry Potter because my mom got her hair done during quarantine. And I was so upset with her. And I was like, I'm petty. How can I piss her off? Mm. I'm going to watch Harry Potter. That's what I'm going to do. Wow. So, I watched all eight movies in a weekend just to piss her off. And then ended up really liking them. Okay. And now I've built my empire off of Harry Potter. And now I was like, did you get your witch hat? Did you make your Harry Potter videos? Mm-hmm. You got to make your Harry Potter videos for white people. They like your Harry Potter videos. That's Where the money hilarious. comes from. So, yeah. Wow. Yeah. So, okay. Are you are you an Avengers person? Were you, were you, is that the same thing you weren't able to? Is that? I've always liked um, superhero movies. My dad was a big Star Wars fan. Okay. So we were big, like, franchise people. So mm-hmm. Star Wars, like, when episodes one through three came out, he would pick us up from school to go see the movies. Okay. It was that big of a deal. So I can't okay. wait to get it for my kids. Hopefully when phase six or seven, I don't know, comes out, hopefully it's better than phase four. But So you down with Star Wars? You know, as I watch it as an adult, I cannot get with it. I cannot. Okay. It just does not click for me. Mm. I tried to watch that first movie and he with the auntie and uncle and he find out and he meet, meet Obi-Wan and then they and then A New Hope C, C-3PO and, and R2-D2 mm-hmm. and they, they find each other and then it, I I get to it and just don't I gotta try again I got oh Jesus I keep on trying but from that see came, everyone has picked and taken the things that they like out of that movie and applied it to so much other stuff Mm-hmm. So it's kind of hard to watch it and just like without just having a blank lens of like, oh, yeah, this is this is the first thing. Like, like there was nothing. And then it was words on the screen that said a long time ago in a galaxy far, far away. Already it's like, wait, this is not the future. So they've been had this stuff. That's crazy. You know, mm-hmm. like. And, and also, I think because I was just talking on the podcast earlier when I was with Tahir and Farron, but like. After you've seen all the Avengers and see how great shit can be graphic-wise, when you see some old shit, you're like, this is so fucking stupid. This is clearly a little person in a fursuit, and I'm not enjoying this. This is fucking dumb. Because I watched Terminator last night for the first time, like the first one, and it had the worst effects in CG. Not but it's CGI. a great movie. Conceptually. The movie I enjoy. But you like, got to understand, when Terminator, this the 80s, when they busting shots in the club, that was wild. That was, yeah. That was like, like the, the, there weren't like necessarily. And it was like titties and like killing. I was like, what is this rated? Like it was showing in 84? Mm-hmm. We saw that lady's titties. Yeah. She fucking the future man. Yeah, yeah. How you let a future man knock you up though? That was crazy. He That's what he was sent to do. He was sent to knock her up? I mean, he wasn't sent to knock her up, but if dude knows, hey, my homeboy is about to be my father. It's like, well, I want to be born. Hey, you got to go back there, bro. Go back to 1985. So I didn't see part two yet. I'm going to watch that when I get to the house. But that also kind of just, why don't you just kill this nigga right now instead of going back in time and killing this girl when she's like 16? We could just kill his daddy right now since he already in the future. They didn't know who, who Sean Con- I mean, What's the name? Uh, John Connor daddy was? Think about it. I just fucked the whole franchise up for you because you over there stuck. Nah, nah, They could have nah, just killed nah. him in 2029 if that's the daddy. So he could never go back and impregnate the mama so he can be born. I don't know if they knew that was the daddy. How they didn't know? Because it's going on. Like, while it's going on, they don't realize. They're just like, yo, he can't be born. But they don't know. Like They never not... thought about, but who was his daddy? Yeah. Because, like, like what if his, what if his dad... Died in like eighty six. They they just never looked into. It. They, they all never that tech, thought about y'all it. Y'all got the like, technology to go back in time, but not DNA tests, please. They I, well okay. When they made Terminator, they didn't have DNA like I guess that. They didn't out there. They also was just like, oh, the future in twenty twenty nine. These are eighties cars with laser beams on it. Like y'all just didn't even think. They okay. Real. So see the thing about Terminator, right? Okay. Is like. They didn't have... It wasn't a, a huge budget. It wasn't? No. The first one. The first one, they didn't have a huge budget. And so Arnold it was all about concept. And then they saw that, and it was like, okay, James Cameron, 
you was able to get people to buy this high concept thing with a little bit of money, yeah. you can handle money. Then they was like, all right, see what you do with Alien. So then he made Aliens. Then they was like, all right, now, yo, you nice with a budget. Then he comes and, and makes T2, and oh. it's like, oh, okay, Titanic. Now he's the dude that you go to with a lot of money, with a lot of bread, because yeah. it's like you could get it done. You know, you, you won't come back and be like, hey, man, hey, we spent the billion. We thought we could make some underwater. I'm sorry, we don't got a movie. You know what I'm saying? Because you deliver like so. But that that that's T1. the first building block. That's his Medea play. That's James Cameron's like that's like his they got the microphone right here, and you know what I'm saying? Like yeah, they ain't at the lace fronts yet. Mm-mm, mm-mm. It was just so funny to see because I'm like I know they just thought they really ate with this in 1984. Like when they show the the robot eye. And then the Arnold Schwarzenegger face, and it's clearly like a a very bad like Michael Myers mask with the red light under it. I'm like, I'm sure they was in the theater like, oh shit, technology, nigga. Ah. A little bit, but like when T2 came out, then it's like, all right, that now that's what it's supposed to look like. I saw T3, and that was pretty nice. So I'm gonna have to go. T2 is like the beginning of you seeing the people turn into liquid. Then Capri Sun was like, yo, we we grabbing that. Michael Jackson was like, we grabbing that. Buster Rhymes, <laughs> Janet Jackson, they was like, we grabbing that. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. The, the whole 90s was about turning melting. into metal liquid. Alex Mack, all that comes from T2. No, he danced a lot of melting that was going mm-hmm. on in the 90s. Everybody was melting. T2 started the melting. Niggas wasn't melting before. That's Mm-mm. crazy. Mm-mm. See, I'm going to watch that. So you that. grew up in a whole melted, you know what I'm saying? Pre-melted. Just I thought melted that was just all normal. The time. SpongeBob melting. Yeah, SpongeBob we don't know about melting. that. Uh, yeah, that's fair. I can't even argue with you on that. Damn. But I'm glad you're going back and, and watching the classics. That's really dope. Mm-hmm. Yeah, because, you know, you got to. Because I kind of want it's Because they still make them. Because that same white lady is still playing Sarah Connor. So I got to still watch them. Yeah, yeah. That's Every a, now and then they'll be like, "All right, we're gonna do another Terminator." Why not? You know, why they got not? Got the budget. The we need new franchises, it. and I feel like you got a new franchise in you. I feel like the way that you like are able to insert yourself into these huge franchises yeah. and create a world that's like kind of realistic, but also like a, a tone and a humor that it, that is missing yeah. from some of these franchises. I feel like you got one in you. I'm going to do one. I'm, yeah. I'm trying to do one where the black woman is a damsel in distress. Because I did like a, a survey on Twitter because I'm like, I've only seen a black woman damsel in distress twice, which is Boys, um, Bad Boys 2 okay. and Blade. Mm-hmm. When was there another black damsel in distress in a major action movie? Other than those two. Yeah. Exactly. Even when a, a black man is the main character in the action movie, they saving a white lady. Mm-hmm. Think about Tenet. Mm. Think about literally anything else. Or even, hell, Terminator. The black cop was saving a white girl. It's just like, who gonna save us? Who gonna save us? Which is... That might be a good name for the movie. <laughs> who gonna save us? <laughs> who, who, who gonna love who us? Who gonna save us? Since you got your degree and you know every fucking thing. Um, Mel Mitchell and who gonna save us? And yeah, and it's gonna be just men of all races running to save me. It's gonna be Indian men, it's gonna okay. be Hispanic men in there, Asian, like um, maybe Korean or Chinese or something. No, actually, okay, actually, no, Chinese. We're gonna do a Chinese, and then like all gonna be fighting. You do have an me. old soul because the way you say Korean is very, Korean. <laughs> very, very much. From a different time. Very, very auntie. Yeah. The Koreans. Yeah. They all gonna come say You should be, you should have been in that that movie about the Korean War. What's the, uh, Jonathan Majors? I tried to watch that on the flight on the way here, and it was just like, they didn't have nobody in it saying Korean. That's the problem. And, 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 yeah, the Korean War, I wasn't here about. <laughs> Korean War, <man. laughs> But them Koreans. Yeah. I gotta see what they're talking about. Man. Hey. We love all our, all our listeners who are Korean. Uh, all the people who are listening air out, horns for the Koreans yeah out in Asia you know <laughs> the whole world worldwide shout out to Korea man shout out to everybody out there listening you know 
Um, Mel, where where can the people find you? Is if there's anything you want to promote, want to tell the people? Um, yeah. So I am it's Mel Mitch on Instagram. I am the baddest Mitch on Twitter and TikTok. And um, follow my podcast, Jokes on You Pod. We trying to get to ten thousand. Okay, so we can start making some money. Okay, we got a little ways to go. But yeah. We got it. We got to get it. I believe it. Y'all can get there. Because I'm trying to make some money. I need, I quit my job. So I got to get some okay. income. Hey, well, you out there doing it. You out here on tour. Thank you, friend. Yeah, yeah. I'm trying. I'm trying my best, man. Just trying to get them numbers up to get my pape up. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Pape, I think it's short for paper. Yes. Uh, that's been the Inconsistent Podcast <laughs> with Rob It's been Rob very Hanks. inconsistent <laughs> in here. And I love that for us. We eight, ta- eight toes down. We we Eight. ten toes down now. We ten toes. We done gained yeah. two toes. We mm-hmm. are ten toes down mm-hmm. in the pot. Yeah. <laughs>